light our darkest hour. Hey guys. Hello, gorgeous. I want to start off by thanking all of the people who have recently been checking out my videos and subscribing. There's been a big spike in views and subs over the last few weeks and it's quite humbling. Glad you're all enjoying the videos and joining me for a trip down memory lane. As I've said before, time travel is possible. You just have to care enough. I also want to give a huge thank you to a particular group of people who cared enough to support the channel with their wallets. The Patreon Tribe! I've been out of work for coming up on a year now and finding new work with a bad wing isn't easy, so my gratitude goes out to the Patreon supporters for their help. You folks aren't paying for new toys. You're helping me pay my internet and energy bill so I can research, edit, and upload new videos. So I just wanted to take a moment to thank these good brothers and good sisters for keeping the channel powered and online. If you'd like to help as well, head over to patreon.com slash michaelmercy. As a thanks, you'll get perks like top secret info on upcoming reviews, access to the videos one day before they're published on YouTube, invites to 80s cartoon commentaries, and request videos for toys or topics you'd like to see covered. Okay, on to part 7 of the 80s Toy Museum Virtual Tour. If you're a Transformers fan, you're gonna be like a junkie on in a scrapyard for these next three installments of the tour. Let's take a look at the northwest corner of the 80s Toy Museum. The wall directly beside it holds my masterpiece and third-party masterpiece collection of 84 and 85 bots. So this mini shelf holds the ones that didn't fit from the movie and beyond. These are modern reinterpretations of classic characters, but they're full of the same old 80s magic. At the very top are some pre and post movie Decepticons. There's the original masterpiece Starscream, decked out in his robe and crown from his coronation. Coronation Starscream? This is bad comedy. An ex transbots Apollyon. Megatron? Is that you? Ready to do some damage to Optimus Prime with his energy sword. <laughs> and the gorgeous Cloud Nine Quake Blast. AKA Shockwave, keeping a watchful eye over Cybertron. Decepticon, we're under attack! Strombo! Which has a little Unicron head orbiting around it. And on the other side of Cybertron, we have Fans Toys Sovereign. Behold, Galvatron. With Ratbat. Ratbat, eject. And X Transbots Andras, also known as Scourge, the Tracker. And I've left an empty spot here for a masterpiece Cyclonus. Maybe I can nab the perfect fusion Quietus somewhere down the road. Third party Transformers have come a long way, and I think rival or surpass the official masterpiece offerings. Maybe it's because the designers aren't just doing their job, they're doing something they love. Next shelf down is one that always gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling. I love the 86 Transformers animated movie. It's one of my favorite movies still to this day. This shelf features all of the heroes from their epic big screen adventure. Beyond good, beyond evil, beyond your wildest imagination. Transformers the movie. There's the colossal Reximus Prime, also known as Me Grimlock King, with X Transbots Ollie, really safe I'm friends today, who's hitching a ride on the big dino. Me Grimlock, no like you. Bumblebee and Spike here. There's Bumblebee with a custom silver faceplate and Spike in his exosuit, and Hot Rods keeping Daniel safe. Daniel. Optimus Prime is getting ready to pass the Matrix. Soon, I shall be one with the Matrix. This is a KO version with a really nice metallic paint job. In the back is Ultra Magnus, still trying to open the Matrix. Open? Damn it, open! Forget it, Magnus! Never! Rodimus Prime showing Magnus how it's done. Arise, Rodimus Prime. 
Optimus. Yeah! Spike's son Daniel in an exosuit. Whoa, this exosuit's fantastic! And... What about me, Magnus? What about me? Ma, ma, ma. I can help, I want to help. What about me? Oh, Primus. Absolutely, positively, definitely. Nobody can get the job done faster than I can. Nobody, nobody, nobody! Okay, shut up! Unique Toys Buzzing. Also known as Blur, the fastest and most annoying Autobot. The incredibly affordable open and play Big Spring, aka Springer. Believe it or not, this is the fun part. And Toy World Leia, aka RC. Stay close to me, Daniel! Watch out, Soundwave. It's Blaster's Tape Army. <laughs> Ramhorn, Steeljaw, Rewind, and Eject. And Keith's Fantasy Club Crash Hog. AKA Rekgar. Where did you learn to talk like that? TV! We talk TV! You talk some TV! I talk some TV. And now the news, don't touch that dial. And he's riding on a supercharged, indestructible junkie on. Conspicuous by his absence is Cup. Cup! Hey, sometimes life gets in the way of toy collecting. Someday I'll get the old timer. Old timer. Sorry. Being such a big fan of the 86 movie, I love having these three dimensional representations of all of my favorite characters. This shelf definitely has the touch and the power. Next shelf down is another masterpiece Rodimus with some different features enabled. He's got his hot rod face, shoulder, and hip articulation this time. All right, hot rod is back, let's party! Along with his blue visor and saw blade. What? And who are you, little fella? I'm Firebolt! Ah yes, Hot Rod's Target Master. And there's a G1 Target Master Hot Rod and Rodimus Prime around him. In the back is an Art Feather Gold Bug. Look at this new paint job! I'm a gold bug! Along with an original G1 Throttlebot Gold Bug. And there's another Masterpiece Ultra Magnus. Kill all the one! With a G1 version in vehicle mode beside. My preferred method of display with Transformers, when space allows, is having the Masterpiece version in bot mode, with the G1 version in vehicle mode beside. And then, there's this guy. Fans Hobby Power Baser, also known as Power Master Optimus Prime. Power Master Optimus Prime, greatest leader of his time. Or Ginray, or Jinrai, or however you pronounce it, if you're from the other side of the pond. Whatever you want to call him, he is a thing of beauty. Thanks. What an amazing birthday present from my family. A worthy representation of one of the coolest G1 Transformers. And his engine transforms into High Q. Hey, I'm from Canada. You'll always be High Q to me. Transform Optimus Prime! Their engine's the key that unlocks their Transformer energy. That's it for Transformers. Next shelf down is Hasbro's Visionaries. It is a time when magic is more powerful than science, and only those who control the magic control destiny. Along with Inhumanoids, Visionaries was one of the last Hasbro toy-based shows produced by Sunbow Animation. Like Inhumanoids, Visionaries only got a short run of episodes, but they're just as awesome as any other Sunbow show. This collection is complete with all figures and vehicles released, although the Dagger Assault is still missing a few pieces. There's the Spectral Knights, Arzon. A whim, thought, and more is sought. Awake, my mind, thy will be wrought. Cryotech. Witter Quick. Sheathe these feet in the driving gale. Make swift these legs, or land I sail. And the leader of the Spectral Knights, Leoric. For raw courage and leadership, you shall wear the totem of the lion. And the knight's vehicles, the Capture Chariot, with feral breathing magic into it. Let's roll! Featuring some custom prism decals on the front. And the Lancer Cycle with Ektar. Do you know how to pilot one of these? Don't worry. All right then, I'll just hang on for the... Ah! And then there's the Darkling Lords. 
the leader Darkstorm. I'm surrounded by incompetence! And Lexar. The arrows turn, the swords rebel, may nothing pierce this mortal shell! Sindar. By nature's hand, by craft, by art, what once was one now fly apart! And Cravex. <laughs> and the vehicles. The Skyclaw with Mortrid. Do you, do you think we have the ability to infuse other vehicles with magic? Yes! And the enormous Dagger Assault with Recon. To the Dagger Assault! They're slightly bigger than G.I. Joe's, so any Joe fan will instantly be comfortable with them. And the holograms are still as magically captivating as ever. Looking forward to taking a closer look at these figures, vehicles, and the show in the future. And I've been waiting a long time to show you this shelf. Yo Joe! It's the 80's Real American Hero Collection. Now you're cooking with gas. I know a lot of you are thinking, I had that guy, and I gave him away, or my mom sold him in a garage sale. No! No! Trust me, I know how you feel. I feel like eggs do after they're scrambled. Most of my original Joes didn't survive the years either. I gave a bunch away to friends with kids, but luckily was able to track down these years ago when I became more serious about vintage toy collecting on eBay or at toy conventions. Like many of the other lines in the museum, most of them weren't all that expensive, especially for being complete and in great condition. Geez, was I the only one that played with my Joes? You got it, Whiz Kid. The prices have gone up quite a bit in the past decade, so I'm glad I pulled the trigger on these when I did. Well, quit Patagonian yourself on the back. These are set up by year with the original 82 slash 83 Joes starting off the lineup. I went with the swivel arm versions of the originals because they're more poseable and I always thought they just looked better. By that much. There's the 83 Joes. Eye in the sky, go in high. Gunko Joe is going low. 84 in behind and 85 and so on. Man, this represents toys in the 80s to me. Look at how many there are. And think about this for a moment. They each have a code name. Scarlet, Barbecue, Quick Kick, Shipwreck, Thunder, Spirit. A real name. Shana M. O'Hara, Gabriel A. Kelly, MacArthur S. Ito, Hector X. Delgado, Matthew Harris Breckenridge, and Charlie Ironknife. A birthplace primary military specialty, a secondary military specialty, unique uniforms with little personal touches, unique gear and accessories. Has more detail and care ever been put into such a huge group of characters? Bad chance. I don't think there's a shelf in this whole room that represents personality and creativity more than this one. You have a peculiar sense of humor, mister. And it's a wonderful tribute to the real life heroes, the brave men and women in the armed forces who will fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. Oh, he'll fight for freedom wherever there is trouble. G.I. Joe is here. To all those who serve and have served, you have my utmost respect, gratitude, and love. Now you know. Yo, Joe! One Shelf Down is another short-lived line from Hasbro inspired by more real-life heroes. The visionaries were slightly bigger than Joe's. This time Hasbro mega-sized the Joe bodies with cops. Central organization of police specialists. There's Longarm getting ready to collar a crook with his power cuffs. Not so fast, Berserko! The leader, Agent BP Vess, also known as Bulletproof. As you can see, bullets can't harm me. And Barricade. <laughs> Take a look at that shield. Eat your heart out, Steve Rogers. In behind them is the Highway Interceptor with Roadblock? Isn't this a little ridiculous?
And there's the Blue Streak motorcycle. <laughs> with Highway. A little bit of trademark recycling going on here. All the units in the vicinity, intercept! Then there's Hardtop behind the wheel of the Ironsides Armored Assault. Hardtop here. The Blur Bandit's going south on Thunder Road. I'm in pursuit. There's the Canine Unit, Bowser and Blitz. Rex Pointer, Chicago PD. Codenamed Bowser. Specialty, K9000 Handler. That's Blitz, his one of a kind cyborg police dog. And Sundown. Codenamed Sundown. That's actually how you have to say it Sundown. Sundown. Try it yourself and you'll see. Sundown. Sergeant Mace hitching a ride on Highway's hover sled. Colt Howards is just the kind of police officer we're looking for. It's crime fighting time! And a couple of cops from the second year release. Call me Powder Keg. Powder Keg, who came with a ton of awesome accessories and a removable bomb blast suit. And Apes with his power stilts. There's the Attack Paddy Wagon with Heavyweight behind the wheel. And Taser and Checkpoint hitching a ride. Hey, we're all part of the team, remember? Yes, sir. And cops showed some love to the heroes in the fire department with Inferno. <laughs> and there's the Air Raid helicopter. I'm Air Raid. With Airwave and Bullseye piloting. Hang on, the cavalry's on its way. Now that's what I call a serious bogey. And you can't have cops without crooks. There's Big Boss. And the Roadster with Turbo Two-Tone. Crimes are wasted. And Berserko and Rock Crusher hitching a ride on the back. We sure made monkeys out of the police! Dr. Bad Vibes with one of my favorite droids, Buzz Bomb. Today you've earned your steel wool cupcakes. There's Buttons McBoom Boom. <laughs> Louie the Plumber. Hyena. <laughs> Bullet. And Nightmare. Unfortunately, this toy line didn't have a Sunbow show to go along with it. Hasbro had decided to put a bullet in the head of their animation ventures by moving over to Deke at that point. But despite the cartoon not living up to the Sunbow shows of the past, the toy line was still awesome, giving kids the chance to fight crime in the future time. The last shelf, well it's actually a shelf on the floor, is Rambo, The Force of Freedom by Coleco. <laughs> For me, this toy line was sort of a precursor to the sixth scale figures I'd collect decades later. There was a military theme like G.I. Joe, but in addition to guns, the figures featured removable belts and harnesses, with holsters for handguns, knives, and grenades. Like cops, the show didn't measure up to the Sunbow shows of the past, but that's okay. We had the movies. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! First Blood remains one of my favorite movies ever, and while part 2 and 3 are more about gunfights than substance, they do provide more great interaction between Rambo and Troutman. You got any ideas? Surrounding them, out. The toys featured some cool motorized play features too, and it was wind-up action so no batteries were needed. Let's take a look at the figures. There's shirtless Rambo showing off some of the scars that were carved into him as a POW in Vietnam. Kind of brutal for a kid's toy when you think about it. And the man who made Rambo. Who the hell are you? Sam Trotman. Colonel Samuel Trotman. Who's armed far more heavily here than he ever was in the movies. Firepower Rambo with flamethrower. I always called this version Arctic Rambo, because whenever he went into a snowy area on the cartoon, he'd always put on this sleeveless hoodie. You gotta love it. Then some members of the Force of Freedom, the White Ninja. A ninja never deserts a brother. Cat, the Master of Disguise. 
give my best to the general. And Turbo. Okay, hogs, you're gonna do some squealing. And there's the Skyfire chopper. I don't understand. Highlighting it is a modern Nika Rambo, which I think looks better in the seat than one of the vintage figures. Where the devil is Rambo? And there's the Skywolf jet. Move out! A missile launcher in the back. And the 6x6 Defender with another Nika Rambo. I think I'll take it out for a spin. There's also General Warhawk and his mercenaries. Are we retreating, General? No, we're advancing to the rear, you idiot! Gripper. Don't move! You are all my prisoners. Who has the honor of having the most Uzis I've ever seen a single figure come with. Nomad. The Black Ninja. You will pay what I ask, and I will do what you are. And Mad Dog on the Savage Strike Cycle. Nobody parties without me! With Sergeant Havoc in the back. You idiots! You let him get away! <laughs> hmm. I wonder what would happen if Sergeant Havoc faced... Sergeant Slaughter. When I choose those buckets, they're gonna scrape you off the walls with a squeegee. Maybe someday we'll find out. And in the back is a carded San Diego Comic Con exclusive Nika Rambo, made up to look like one of the original Coleco carded Rambo figures. And that's part 7 of the 80s Toy Museum Virtual Tour. Part 8 will enter a world transformed with my modern masterpiece and vintage G1 collection of 84 and 85 Transformers. Love what you're seeing? Support the channel by going to patreon.com slash michaelmercy to keep the series and the channel going. Got a fond memory you'd like to share? Scroll down and go to town. The museum's closed for another day till your next visit, Nerdmaste! Stay.